Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to attempt, yes attempt, to tear down this brand new Xbox Series S controller. So this is exactly the same as the Series X, it's just that this one is white instead of black. Now you might think it looks just like the Xbox One controller but there is little differences between them. Thing is, in the hand it actually feels a lot different. They've curved off this area here and your hands seem to fit around it. It just feels a lot more compact. Also, a little bit of texture as well, which really makes it feel nice when you hold it in the hand. As well as that, quite clicky when it comes to the D-pad down here. So now, how's it going to come apart? I haven't got a clue. Nobody's done a video as of yet, as I've started uh, filming. By the time I probably release it, there will probably be 150 videos. But it's going to be interesting to see how it comes apart. Now, I've repaired actually quite a few Xbox One controllers, so I'm quite happy taking these apart. Will this be the same? It might be, or it might be completely different. So I think to start with, I'm going to basically be using my nails, or maybe getting a pry tool in here. And let's see, is that going to pull off from there? Yeah, I think I'm going to be getting a pry tool in here because I don't want to break my nails and I'm going to be pulling this apart here. Hopefully it will expose screws and then we can tear it down and we can have a look on the inside and see is it any different at all from the Xbox One controller apart from the little styling cues on the outside. Obviously we have a share button now but are the sticks the same? Are the buttons for the D-pad the same? What we'll do is we'll strip down both of them at the same time and we'll compare them bit by bit. Let's get started. Okay, so remember, the white one here is the new controller, the blue one is the old Xbox One controller. I'm going to be taking this apart, just fast forwarding through it, and I'm going to be using the same process for this one here, and I will do this one in real time. Now, before you say it, you don't have to say I'm an idiot, I don't know what I'm doing, because I will tell you that I do not know what I'm doing. Obviously, something could go badly wrong on this, but look, it might even make a more fun video if I do end up breaking it. I'm sure more people will probably get more fun out of that than seeing the inside of this. Let's get started. All right, here we go. So you can see that came off nice and easy. Let's see if this is going to do the same. Yes, it is. A little bit stiffer to get off, but there we go, and that exposes torque screws again, just like the ones on here. Can you see here and here, and here and here. So far, so good. So I'm going to be using a T9 for here, and it looks like a T9 for here as well. And again, I think there's a hidden one under here because I can feel a little hole. So let's gently peel this sticker back. So, so far, exactly the same and even the same screws have been used between the older generation and this generation. And that pops off. And here we have there so looking at it now just a quick look from here you can see rumble motor with the big weight on the left side rumble motor with the small weight on the right hand side so they are looking just about identical obviously share buttons different and USB-C and micro USB here very 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 similar okay that's the old one there and positive up the top negative at the bottom Positive, negative. Let's see if this is going to come out. Yes, it is. Just like that. I wonder, are they interchangeable? No, they're not going to be here because of this back bit here. But the bottom side of them are the same. I believe the bottom's the same because they're supposed to fit the same keyboards and, you know, like your chat adapter and stuff like that as the uh, older generation. You know what, to me, the weights at the bottom look exactly the same and the weights on the triggers up here. So you can see the weight there. And if you compare that to this one. They look to be the same. And it seems to be the same 
way of operating the distance here. You see with this here and that component there, I think it's called a, a Hall Effect Sensor. Don't quote me on that. So the bumper buttons come out and you can see that we have a bumper button here and here, a little clickable button. Right, that unhooks there and unhooks here. Like so. And again, just like this one here, you can see that these go in to hit the bumper buttons and these go in to hit the bum bumper buttons. And in here, same setup, just a slightly different angle. So you can see there, these are more vertical. Can you see them here? Just these little buttons in here. So the trigger motors are wired the same way, going down the side here. So that all looks to be identical. Let's have a look at this D-pad. So it just unclips at the bottom there and lifts off. And here we have the D-pad here. Okay, so the D-pad does feel a lot more substantial. You can see there's a lot more height to it there, can't you? The resistance on these buttons, you have to press them down a little bit harder. So the little switches here are ever so slightly different, but it's still the same principle of that little bit of metal that flexes in like that and then pops back out again. Let's get the circuit boards out. Yeah, again, exactly the same as the old generation. So the T6 bit, a Torx bit. Again, the screws are the same between old and new. Now, straight away, what I can see here is that on here, we've only got one aerial, but yet here we have two. I'm not sure whether is that being used as an aerial on this one? Possibly. But this has got two wires on this one, so let's just unclip them. Right, thumbsticks, let's see if these are interchangeable or not. Right, that appears to go on there nicely. Whether it's going to fit in the frame or not, I'm not sure. But looking at them, they look to be, they look to be the same, don't they? This has a deeper concave to it than this one, but they look to be interchangeable. Let me have a close look at these analog sticks and see if they are the same Alps brand. As far as I can see, they are exactly the same. So this is the old Xbox one, and you can see it says Alps there. You can see the orientation of the button that clicks in. You know, when you click in there, is on that side. And now if you have a look here on the new one, again, you can see Alps here clicking buttons here, to me, they look to be identical. I can't see any difference between either of them. The potentiometers on the side look to be exactly the same. Again, I can't see any difference between them. And again, on this side here, can you see they're the same? But I'll tell you what, let's take out one of the wipers just to see. Thing is, a lot of people will say, oh, that's bad for stick drift and this, that and the other, but at least you know they're gonna be very easy to replace. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Let's just prise open this one here and have a look at the wipers on the inside. Right, so that's the little wiper here. And already that looks to be the same from memory. But let's just double check. Let's take off the same one on this side. Right, so here we have it, you can see they're the same. I know this is a different color, but I'm pretty sure if you took apart numerous Xbox ones, you would find that they would be different colors. You can see the wipers are exactly the same on them as well. So as far as I'm concerned, the potentiometers and the analog sticks are all exactly the same. Now, if you're ever curious about an easy way to fix stick drift, if you can't fix it by just simple cleaning, then sometimes rather than having to unsolder the all of it here, you can see here that, for example, this one here is for 
up and down, this potentiometer, and this one is for left and right, this one here. So if you've got a problem with stick drift on the up and down, you can often just get away with just unsoldering those three connections there, pull out that potentiometer, put a new one in, solder it in, clip it back into place, and then hopefully that's a lot easier than having to change out the whole thing. Well, I'm just gonna pop these back in. There you go, and you can see that that's clipped nicely back into its home again. Right now, one thing which is interesting is it also has a nice replaceable headphone jack, but yet it's slightly different. So look at the one, the new one here, and look at the old one here. So the old one has two more contacts on the left-hand side here. Now, if we were to have a look at the actual board itself, we can see that here we have the contacts here and then just a one contact down in this corner. But yet, if you look at the old board, we have the four contacts here there and two contacts there. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've never actually looked into what they are. So I'll tell you what, let's get a multimeter and maybe those ones there are joined to each other, in which case then they're redundant here. So they might have saved just a penny or two by just taking them out. Okay, I've got my four pole little jack here so I can find out what goes where. So this is gonna be the ground or the shield. Okay, so that's going to there. Next one, to there. Hold on, let's see if it's coming up anywhere else. No. That one. and that one. Right, so according to this, these two are not in use anyway, so I'm not quite sure why they're there, and I'm not quite sure why they're on the board, but they're not on it anymore because you don't need them to be. All the other pins are doing something, and that's why they're here, and those two have been left out. But apart from that difference, you can see they're exactly the same, so I can't see any reason why you couldn't use this one on here as a replacement. You can see there it's gonna fit nice, just like so. The moldings and everything look to be the same. So what you could do is just remove those two or even just put a bit of insulation tape over them. But even so, there's nothing on the board there that they're gonna be shortened against. Well, let's see if we can see any other differences. So you can see between here and here, the connections and everything, everything looks to be very, very similar. They're using the same way to connect the front and back boards on these connectors here. Now, let's look at the board underneath. And again, they've got the same layout with this button here on the back board, not on the front board. Okay, so we've got the two boards out here. We'll have a close look there in a minute. Let's just have a look at the buttons, see if they look like they're interchangeable or not. Okay, well, they certainly fit in the same holes and they've got the same kind of idiot-proof design. You know, see where they have different cutouts so they can only fit in one way. Depth looks to be the same. Yep. Let's have a look at the Xbox button. That's gonna be different, isn't it? Yeah, the Xbox button's different, I'd say. Yeah, you can see the Xbox button on the Series controller has a lot more depth to it. Yeah, so that all looks very, very similar. Now, let's have a look at the sync button here is slightly different. This sync button comes in from the front here, while on this one it comes in from the back, so that's a slight bit different. So obviously, this part here is gonna be different again because of the share button as well. Right now, let's have a look here. You can see how similar in design they are. So this is the sync button. You've got the bumper buttons here, these buttons here. But you can hear the difference between them. It feels like there's a little bit more travel on this one here. So we've got the carbon there to make the button presses here when it joins each side of that together. And it looks like it's gonna be on the same here as well. Yeah, it is. Same design as well. Obviously, micro USB, USB-C. So now this one would be harder 
And yeah, all the pins are hidden. Can you see the pins here? So on this one, you see it's not, it's not easy, but it's not impossible to replace, because you can see the bottom of the, the pins here joining the board just here. But on this one here, can you see that annoyingly, the pins appear to be hidden. I wonder, does that bit unclip though? Yeah, unfortunately, even when you undo those side bits, it's still not coming out. I think I can just about see some little solder balls just down here. So maybe you'd have to heat them up to allow you to lift this up. That might then give you access to the pins underneath. Or maybe you just have to put it on completely with hot air, you know, like one layer of the Nintendo Switch pins are hidden. It might be a similar type thing here, but it looks like at this moment in time they're both hidden. So that doesn't look for someone like me to be an easy port to change over, but maybe they're going to be really, really reliable and maybe they won't need to be changed over. So really the only last thing left now, as far as I can see, because these motors here are exactly the same, are they, let's see if they're bigger than each other. No, that looks to be the same and that looks to be the same, so I think the motors would be interchangeable, is let's just have a look at the chip on this side here. Right, so this chip has got shield over it, so you can't see it, but this one is out in the open. So let's zoom in and have a look at the chip. There we have it, that is the chip zoomed in, and you can see it's an ARM chip, Microsoft ARM. So that is it. If I'm honest with you, slightly disappointing because apart from the share button, it is so similar to the existing controller. I suppose you could argue that the Xbox One controller, they spent, I think, was it $100 million on that, designing that. So really, a lot of people would say that they've already got it right. So why do you need to make it better when it's already very, very good. So now let me quickly fast forward through this next bit and get it back together. If I have any difficulties, I will of course show you that along the way. One thing that I've just noticed, which is different when I'm putting it back together, is this is the support that goes around the D-pad here. And at the top, we have a long prong that goes through. There's an actual hole in the board that goes right the way through here. So I'm not sure why they've done that. Unless, is it just to give it somehow a little bit more support? Because that's definitely not on this one. That, that one just ends here with the two little clips. So that's different, but I'm not quite sure why that is needed. So you can see it's there, and the prong goes right the way through to there. Unless, is it picking up the ground off the board? Well, it is picking up the ground on the board, isn't it? But why would you need to have a ground on that inner ring there? So now look, between here and here, we now have a short. Yeah, but now check this out, between here and here, we don't. And that is on, that is on properly. Let's force it downwards. See, this isn't going anywhere, but this one is, and that's been done on purpose. Do you know what I think? I'm wondering whether it's something to do with interference. Could it be to make the connection cleaner between the controller and the Xbox, or could it be to make the Bluetooth connection cleaner when you're working off a PC? Could it be possibly to do with the analog sticks or the D-pad interference for that? I don't know. If you know, add it down to the comments below, but they've definitely done that for a reason, and it's quite interesting. Right, we're nearly there. If I can get this on, it means I've put it back together, without breaking anything and taking it apart without breaking anything. Amazing, look at that. Right, let's see. Do you know what? I haven't even turned this controller on. Let's see if the button lights up. Fantastic, sync. There we go, and sync. Perfect, well, I can honestly say that was a complete and utter joy to take apart. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's just boring. But sometimes it's nice to know that you can easily replace the components from here with the last generation. So that is it for this video. I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you liked it, think about giving it a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this to 74 views by the next week. And uh, yeah, I've uh, got plenty more videos lined up for the Xbox Series S and X and also the PlayStation 5. That's it. Take care. Bye now.